No, thank, thanks a lot uh, for the warm welcome. Uh, my name is Solène Moutier, and indeed I work for EAT Raw Materials. Uh, it was very interesting to hear the um, presentation by Eva just before about NG, because indeed we uh, use a lot the NG project as inspiration um, due to the very high number of girls that they manage to train. And uh, it's it's very it's very interesting for us to see what is being done. Uh, and I know in the past there's been some collaboration uh, between NG and Girls Go Circular, so I hope that will be the case again in the future. So I'm also happy that I don't have to introduce again uh, EAT and EAT raw materials. It's always a bit complicated to explain uh, this uh, institution. Uh, to people. I usually uh, focus on the fact that it's uh, an institute connecting uh, industrials, universities and researchers uh, to boost innovation across Europe. And indeed, the Girls Go Circular project is coordinated by EIT Raw Materials, but is actually um, um, like a, a produced, let's say, developed by the other um, EIT as well. So that's um, something that is quite interesting is that um, EIT is divided in several branches. So EIT raw materials, EIT food, EIT manufacturing, EIT climate. And so we use the expertise of all of those um, EIT bodies that can uh, to then create modules for Girls Go Circular. So that allows us um, to, uh, yeah, I'm not sharing my screen yet. I thought for the introduction it was okay. I think now you have it. Um, that allows us uh, to have expertise, uh, really broad expertise on different topics related to the circular economy. So moving on now to Girls Go Circular. Um, so it's an EIT community um, project. So as was uh, nicely said, the aims is to equip uh, schoolgirls of the age of 14 to 19 across Europe with digital and entrepreneurial skills by 2027 through an online learning platform about the circular economy. Um, so the, so far we have trained 16,000 girls and the aim is to reach 40,000 girls uh, by 2027. It is in support of Action 13, Encourage Women's Participation in STEM of the European Commission, a digital education action plan. And it's also part of the new European uh, innovation agenda. So the project um, objective is threefold, uh, indeed to raise awareness about circular economy. And it's very important to start this from a very young age if we want to make an impact and you know change behaviors as well so it's it's very interesting to see how already uh, aware this generation can be um, and how interested in the topic they are and we have often uh, feedback then from teachers or parents that uh, it's actually their kids telling them not to turn the heating on in the house or this kind of thing so it's very interesting for us to work with a young audience of so 14 to 19 years old. The second aim is to empower girls with digital entrepreneurial skills. And the third is to deconstruct gender stereotypes. So why do we have uh, this emphasis on uh, digital skills? It's because in the future it's assessed that more than 90% of the job are expected to require some degree of e-skills or digital literacy. And when looking at um, um, employment in the ICT sector, so information communication technology, then uh, the de gender inequality is very obvious and persistent. So we like to recall some, uh, some uh, statistic a little bit. So we have uh, within the ICT professionals, only 17% are women. And in general, women are more likely to struggle uh, in this ICT sector to find their place uh, due to several barriers. So gender stereotypes, male dominated environment, lacking in diversity, 
Uh, there is a huge gender pay gap as well. Uh, women tend to be paid 19% less than their men counterparts in this sector. So a lot of them drop out of the sector. So it's very important for us to eliminate this uh, gender specific expectation about ICT professions. Um, there's a study by Microsoft that shows that usually girls are interested in science and it's at the end at the between the age of 11 and 13 that this interest decrease so that's why we're happy to um, um, be working with this age range as well so a little bit of uh, uh, background of how the project came to exist so we started in september 2020 with a pilot phase in six countries so at the time we were working in um, uh, the countries that so you see in blue, then, I mean, it started with six, then it landed with eight, and uh, two more were added uh, this year. So this year we added Lithuania and Slovenia. And as part of uh, EIT's response to the Ukrainian war, we also translated the program in Ukrainian so that it's accessible for students who were displaced in some of our project countries. Um, so as you see now, we're present in Lithuania, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, North Macedonia, Greece, Cyprus, Slovenia, Italy, Ukraine, and Portugal. And uh, starting from next year, we will be starting the expansion to cover all the EU um, 27 member states. Until now, we were focusing on uh, risk countries, so part of the original innovation scheme, uh, so mostly Eastern and Southern Europe. And starting from next year, uh, the aim is to start covering all EU uh, countries by the end of 2024. Uh, as I say, so far we trained 16,000 girls, uh, more than 700 schools were supported, and the goal is to reach 40,000 by 2027. And so um, the program is fully online. It's, a, it's a, an online learning platform called the Circular Learning Space. So I can encourage you if you're interested to go online and create yourself an account. Um, similarly to NG, it's a, a free uh, resources that are available. It's composed of 15 modules to explore the circular economy from different angles. So using different sectors, different perspectives. Um, and it's available in 12 languages. So far, we have uh, 32,000 users on the platform. And again, so learning mostly uh, digital and entrepreneurial uh, skills. So you have here the home page. Uh, and actually, the way it's uh, built is out of those 15 modules, you have two introduction modules. I think we can see it here. Um, so it starts with two introduction modules. The first one is about the circular economy, given a general introduction, what is the circular economy? And the second introduction modules is about online safety. So because we're going to be training their digital skills, they will be doing a lot of things online or using softwares that are available online or social media. And we want to make sure that they do so safely. So this is the first module that does. all students have to do. Uh, in order to learn about data protection, so how much uh, to disclose and only really what is necessary, especially working with minor students, um, how to identify when you look at information, the origin, the source, and how reliable it is or not, um, how to um, compare information um, to test the reliability, um, this sort of uh, topics are covered. And once they've done those two intro modules, then they can uh, get uh, access to the 13 other modules that were developed throughout the years. Uh, so we started with uh, the intermediate modules, that is in terms of skills that are being developed. So we are uh, using as references uh, Digicom, so the digital, the, sorry, digital framework, GreenComp, uh, the Green Framework, uh, and Intercomp, the Entrepreneurial Framework, in order to identify uh, what are the key competencies to develop. And those framework always use uh, progression uh, levels. So intermediate modules would be intermediate digital skills. Then we move to advanced and finally expert uh, level skills. 
So the first one we have was a circular economy for smartphone and electronic devices. Then we have one about fashion, so circular fashion um, versus uh, slow uh, versus fast fashion. Sorry, that is currently going on. Uh, metals, rethinking plastics, circular economy of food in cities, e-waste, robotics, uh, tackling climate change through circular consumption. And this year we developed those five new modules. We're very excited about it. Uh, they are you know, the state-of-the-art modules, uh, so we like to promote them uh, first. One is about sustainable mobility and inclusive cities. The second is circular and climate resilient transformation of cities climate neutral hospitals of the future, artificial intelligence, and finally schools as living labs for systemic food circularity, where the students will learn how to grow food uh, in their school backyard and how to assess the different data that needs to be uh, considered before launching such a project and then how to process this data using digital skills uh, to make it more efficient. So these are the different modules. Uh, at EIT Raw Materials, we use a lot of uh, resources from the uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation. We think that they are very good, um, suitable for uh, this age range. But it is interesting to be working um, with all different EIT um, centers. So then each center can bring their expertise. So EIT Manufacturing developed the module on fashion, for instance. Uh, EIT Digital did the one on artificial intelligence. So it's really nice to have this collaborative work on building the modules. Each module also, uh, in five new modules, we've also added one lesson that gives some role models in this industry. So re uh, looking at the health sector, so a female role model uh, that is um, working specifically on the issue of circular economy in hospitals. So in order to deconstruct gender stereotypes, it's one of the main things also, uh, as Eva had uh, rightly mentioned, to provide uh, female role models to the students as well. Um, this is just a quick slide to show you a little bit uh, one of the lessons. So 50% of the module is a lesson with a little bit of text, some picture and quizzes and games and some videos. And then 50%, the second 50%, is about a challenge. So then it's more hands-on exercise. So this is part of the lesson on sustainable mobility. Uh, sorry, it looks a, a little bit funny because it's actually three screenshots that I put next to each other. That's not how it would look on the platform. Uh, for instance, this shows uh, the Plaza Mayor in Madrid at different years. So the first picture is in 1910, then in the middle is 1960, and then 2010 and comparing what were the priorities at this time in terms of mobility. So it's quite uh, fun to see in the first picture, uh, the tramway has actually a priority on the Plaza Mayor and it's, it goes all around the square and uh, it's a space with also uh, some green uh, forestry and uh, a lot of people able to walk around. In 1960, then we're moving on to cars. Cars are absolutely um, the main concern in the urbanism and finally moving back to 2010 where it's a fully pedestrian area with the metro passing underneath. So uh, this is the kind of exercise we like to give concrete examples and then go through uh, this with the students. Um, as I said, then 50% of the, after they've learned the lesson is a challenge. So then we introduce a societal challenge. I see that I'm running out of time, I'm going very quick. So that's something very important for us is to always phrase it in a um, concrete issue. So we look at an issue, for instance, recycling. Then we see, okay, how does digital skills can allow us to recycle more efficiently? And then we teach them about a digital uh, tool that exists, different softwares. For instance, uh, this is Teachable Machine to learn a model learning process. So uh, they learn how to um, teach uh, the software, how to identify different types of waste based on the color and the material it's made of. And then it's um, you know basic uh, of a teachable machine like this. So for us, it's very interesting to use um, role, um, role plays. 
So we tell them, you are a CEO of this company or of this hospital, you are a developer, uh, you are a project manager. So they have to develop the tools and then present the result to their class. So that's what we do in the sustainable mobility. Uh, for instance, they also had to develop an app, uh, an app mock-up with a point system, a gamif gam uh, like a gamification app where based on how sustainable your mean of transportation to your school was, then you would earn points and then you would have rewards like free lunch at the canteen. And that got the students very involved and very excited. So we're very happy to, uh, to see the ideas, very creative ideas. They really like to compete between each other. So now we're looking at ways to use those challenges and to promote the program, but also maybe to have schools compete between each other, which we haven't done so far. So unfortunately, I'm already running out of time. Uh, this was just to show uh, digital skills, entrepreneurial skill, and circular economy that are addressed by the program. And a little bit of uh, email address. Feel free to contact me directly. Uh, I put my email address uh, at the bottom or go on the website of Girls Go Circular if you're interested. We're always looking for partners or happy to give more information. And this is a quick photo from the Women and Girls in STEM Forum, which was uh, the annual event for Girls Go Circular that took place last month in Brussels. And we had an app challenge taking place where students had to come up with an idea for an app to boost girls' interest in STEM. And it was so exciting, uh, so energetic and suspenseful and uh, then to uh, have this award ceremony with the girls that were very excited and driven. Sorry for uh, running a little bit out of time and uh, feel free to drop me an email if you're interested. <laughs> thank you, Salena. You are absolutely on time. <laughs> um, but thank you for considering <laughs> my, my <laughs> message in the chat. Well, um because not so much questions uh, have been come across uh, uh, from the chat i encourage you to allocate uh, time for example to explain these skills for the last uh, mm -hmm. uh, last uh, uh, slide of your presentation if you can go back yes definitely okay. so in so, one two minutes thank you no problem so indeed those the skills are aligned with those european competency frameworks so for digital, it's, for instance, evaluating and managing data, information and digital content, interacting, sharing and collaborating through digital technologies. For instance, they would have to um, develop a social media campaign to raise awareness on the use of plastics, for instance, or mm -hmm. they will be researching inf um, influencers and try to see what do they do to make circular economy a topic of interest for people who would be um, probably less inclined to be interested uh, in this issue. Managing digital identities, developing digital content. Uh, we had, uh, as I say, like developing uh, gam uh, gamified app um, mockups, uh, these machine learning modules, um, different software that we use. It's amazing what's available uh, nowadays where you can learn your, uh, how to develop a chat box uh, like uh, you see on several websites or this kind of thing. And it's, it is quite um, entertaining and uh, playful for uh, the students. Entrepreneurial skills, spotting opportunities for creating value, creativity, vision, valuing ideas, ethical and sustainable thinking, taking the initiative, working with others, and circular economy, transition to a circular economy, and then all the topics that I mentioned before. It's very broad and it's very interesting to have the, those transversal skills uh, in the program. Um, and we see, we really see uh, that it, it makes really a full on picture and the students really enjoy it. So that's, that's something for us that is very nice but also everything is online. We're dealing with minors, so we really want to make sure that uh, they actually do it uh, safely and using some critical thinking. Uh, so we use, we rely a lot on the teachers, although it's online, the program is mostly done by teachers in their classroom. So students are still on computer or tablets, but then uh, doing it with the support of the teachers. And that's been really great for us. Uh, to have this um, because otherwise it would be, I think, a bit too difficult. We have some English teachers who use the program in English, although it's available in their native language. IT teacher, science teacher, uh, it depends on what angle, then they can pick the modules themselves based on what's of interest. 
and uh, and of course uh, support the students and often they give it as a homework to then go and uh, feel one of the challenge and then the next day they go back to the class and they present their results so as a group that's very nice.